If Sforza thought taking territory would make him safe, he was a fool. The King of Naples looked hungrily northward to the city so easily taken by a rogue mercenary. Sforza needed allies. Sigismondo Malatesta came with a Venetian force, as did Sforza's ever-loyal cousin Micheletto. But the Condottiero needed a more powerful ally. He took his biggest gamble by going to meet an old friend. You might have thought that when Sforza walked into the Milanese court, that Visconti would have ordered him arrested, or that Piccinino would have personally killed him. But surprisingly, Visconti accepted Sforza like a father accepts his wayward son. Sforza and the Duke's daughter were finally wed, and the implication was obvious. Sforza would rule Milan when Visconti died. Whatever the Duke's intentions, this favoring of the prodigal son incensed Piccinino. He furiously tore his contract and stormed out of Milan. If Visconti would not see Sforza for what he was, Piccinino would find another patron. Pledging himself to the King of Naples, Piccinino had one goal, to destroy Sforza. Cousin, it is time for me to make a name for myself. I will join Malatesta in service to Venice. May our family always triumph, and may your victory over Piccinino be swift. We meet again, Francesco Attendolo. But you have no cousin here to help you. It is just you and I. Presto. Salve. Condo. Are you even going to try to fight me, or are you hoping that I die of boredom? Hi. Hi. Correct. Run inland, Sforza. Hide in the mountains. I control this lake. Impero. Ein. Ago. Fight me like a man, Sforza. Not like a coward hiding behind crossbowmen. Impero. Presale. Ago. About time you discard your pitchforks and shovels and build a real army. I prefer a fair fight anyway. Salvando. Impero. Sane. Ai sane. Ago. Sane. Ago. Pugno. Ai. Porro. Ago. Sane. Ai. Pugno. Presto. Commita. Ai. Sane. Commita. Ai. Pugno. Pero. Porro. Comita. Porro. Comita. Ago. Puño. Sane. Porro. Ay. Ago. Ay. Sane. Ago. Porro. Comita. Puño. Porro. Puño. Comita. Porro. Sale. Sale. Puño. Comita.
Puño. Porro. I'm Sane. It is I'm... never over, Sforza. I'm... I will haunt Sane. you until my I'm... last days, and my own sons will carry on my purpose. To bring the house of Sforza down to its knees, I'm... to the gutter where it belongs. Sane. The battle between Sforza and Piccinino was the centerpiece of the war over Italy. Sforza served Milan against Piccinino's Neapolitans. And then, Piccinino returned to Milan's service while Sforza went to the Venetians. No matter which banners they fought under, the rivalry between the two men became the one constant of the war. But Sforza's Forbizia proved to be decisive. He defeated Piccinino in battles across northern and central Italy. The disgraced Piccinino was finally relieved by Visconti and spent his last breaths in Milan cursing Sforza's name to his two sons. With his rival and equal finally defeated, Sforza seemed destined to fulfill his grandest ambitions. Then, by a twist of fate, Filippo Visconti died, undoing all of Sforza's plans. Visconti's death left Milan in turmoil. Outlying towns rebelled, and Venice threatened the city. By way of marriage, Sforza held a better claim on Milan than anyone, but strangely, the ambitious captain did not take his dowry. He allowed the lawyers and professors of Milan to fashion a republic with all the trappings and corruption of the old Roman one. They called it the Golden Ambrosian Republic, after St. Ambrose. But there was nothing blessed or saintly about this republic. Surrounded by enemies, the Republicans of Milan more skilled at reading books than leading men into war, needed a captain to command the war against Venice. Sforza, by now employed by the Venetians along with his compatriots Malatestra and Micheletto, did not miss an opportunity to once again betray those who paid him, as well as those closest to him. Rescinding his own claims on Milan, he agreed to serve the Republic against his own cousin Micheletto in exchange for control of the city of Brescia. The leaders of the Republic agreed, even though there were many rumblings that Sforza could not be trusted. After all, for a piece of land, he was now marching against his own blood. Signore, the Venetians command Lodi in the center. The towns of Caravaggio and Piacenza are in league with them and must also be subjugated by the Republic. Cremona in the east will surrender to us once we reach it. We can use these bridges to cross the Po, but know that the barricades block our enemies from crossing as well. Impero? Return to Milan, Francesco. I have no quarrel with you. Leave the Republicans to fend for themselves, and Impero? both of us will be rich men. Ein, sane, fabulo. Presto, ein, ago. Presto. Condo. Ein, ago. You wound me, cousin. Ein. I would never want to hurt you. But you leave me no choice. I told you I must make a name for myself. I cannot live in your shadow any longer. Sane, correctus. Ein. Presto. Ein. Condo. Ein. Condo. Presto. Condo. Go back to reading Greek books with your Republican masters, Francesco. Let men with honor fight for Italy. Your father would weep to see you now, cousin. 
you fight your own blood for the sake of a sliver of Milanese gold. Presto. Rode together, cousin. Cities and women alike were no match for us. Now you come to my doorstep as an enemy. The garrison of Piacenza has thrown down their arms. Ein. Presto. Sane. Ein. Ein. Ago. Sane. Comida. Ein. That is not enough to end my fight. I told you that I will not be overshadowed by you. Ein. Curse you, cousin. I will not forget your treachery. No one will forget it. What goes around comes around, Francesco. Remember that. Presto. I bring terrible news, Signore. Milan has made peace with Brescia. Your promised payment has been taken out of your hands by betrayers. Impero. Though Milan grew stronger with Sforza's victories, the Republicans came to fear and hate him. They saw Sforza as a Caesar intending to topple their new republic. These bookish professors and lawyers listened intently to two agitators who had returned to Milan. Two brothers with harsh words and a fierce vendetta against Sforza. The sons of none other than Piccinino swore vengeance upon Sforza. They incited the Republicans to betray him by signing a secret truce with Brescia before Sforza could take that city. This, of course, angered the Condottiero. He had agreed to serve the Republic only in exchange for the city. Stifling the ambitions of a man like Sforza was a fatal mistake. Milan was prepared for the siege. Bronze cannons lined the walls and a vast militia was trained. Even the hoarding merchants sold their possessions to arm the mercenaries of the Piccinino brothers. Milan sent emissaries to convince the Duke of Savoy that Sforza would threaten all of Italy. Thousands of Savoyard troops marched against Sforza. But battles are not only won on the field with men and horses, they can also be won in a dark tent over a barrel of wine. In one such tent, Sforza met with Malatesta, now commander of the Venetian troops. 
Malatesta listened as Sforza ranted furiously of Milan's treachery. He knew that Sforza was not angry that the Republic had betrayed him, as much as that it had done so before Sforza could betray the Republic. But Sforza offered an opportunity for Malatesta and his Venetian employers. While Sforza hurled his men and his riches against Milan's walls, the Venetians would be free to conquer the rest of northern Italy. Malatesta agreed to help Sforza, but as always, alliance and treachery between Condottieri were only opposite sides of the same coin. I know. My brother, it is Sforza, the little dog that thinks he will be Duke. Let us see how the dog runs when he hears our cannons boom. Correct, Sane. Ein, correctus. Condo. They prattle like women, Francesco, but their swords are sharper than their tongues. Here is a token of our friendship. Now, build some towers and walls. Francesco, I cannot leave my fort unguarded. Would you build at least five towers near my camp, per favore? Condo. Condo. Ha! We will soon avenge our father, brother. Indeed, young Jacopo, he would be so proud of us. Condo. Sane. Condo. Sane. Ai. Ago. Comita. Ai. Pugno. Comita. Porro, pugno, porro. Sam, did you think that I would wait to let you betray me? I cannot let the fox make off with all the hens. It is not personal, my friend. Strictly business. Pero, salve, ai, sane. Condo. Well fought, Swatsa. This was business, not personal. We will meet again one day. Adio, my friend. Brother, Sforza has destroyed our farms and mines. We have neither bread nor money to pay the soldiers. Cristo! Sforza has broken into the city! Don't just stand there, you fool! Sbarcati, push him back! Sane! Comita! Ago! Sane! Ain! Ain! Sane! Correcto! Ain! Ain! Pugno! Ain! Sane! Ain! Sane! Correcto! Ain! Condo! Condo! Press Ain! Ago! Hunger and disease spread in the besieged city. The soldiers left the walls and turned their weapons inward to the cloistered professors and lawyers who had promised them liberty, but at a great cost. Is it better to be feared or loved? In that moment, Sforza was both. Milan opened her gates and Sforza lavished the people with all of the grain, their own grain that he had taken during the siege. The grateful, if foolish, people crowned Sforza, that treacherous, conniving, selfish bastard, Duke of Milan. It was not his final triumph, but it was his grandest. That is the story of Sforza, from one who fought with him and against him. Do I wish ill upon him? No more than I would wish ill on the fox who raids the hen house in the black of night. It does only what a fox does and cannot be blamed for it. I do not blame Sforza any more than I would blame myself. After all, Sforza's blood is in me, for I am his cousin, Micheletto. Sforza is like me.
We are Condottieri. We are the contract men of Italy.